Hey guys, how's it going? Finally back at it with another LSV Tech build video. It's been quite some time and I've done a little bit of stuff off camera. Nothing super crazy though, but today we're gonna be showing you how to install an ATI Super Damper on a B-Series engine with the help of Charlie, Doridoku, and BV Speed. My God. That was fucking close. Here is my LSB Tech build as it sits currently. Done a couple things like got the upper timing cover to fit with new bolts since the last video. Installed some coolant hoses on the back. Get all this stuff all wrapped up. Put the idle air control valve on. Not gonna be running coolant to that, but we're getting really close. One of the last things we have to install is the crank pulley, which I will show you now. So here are the three things that you're going to need to install an ATI Super Damper onto your B-Series engine. They are press fit, unlike just a standard keyed pulley, like the stock one. In this box we have our Super Damper, we have the B-Series crankshaft adapter from Charlie at Doridoku. Just because most kits don't come with the correct thread size to seat the ATI Damper onto a Honda B-Series. This is a crank pulley installer tool that I purchased off of Amazon that's nearly identical to the ATI one, but it costs like a quarter of the price. I'll put a link to that in the description, as well as Charlie's Instagram, so you can order a crank pulley adapter for yourself. Here's what you get in the box with the ATI street pulley, I think this is, with the extra belt for the power steering, since I will be running that on the new engine. You get the pulley itself, this extra area to put a power steering belt and the bolts to secure it. Also comes with an instruction manual, as usual, and I'll be following that to install the crank pulley today, as well as Brian's video at BB Speed, and I will link his video in the description. In the kit provided by Charlie is the crank pulley adapter that will adapt it to thread into the tool, and three bolts to be used when pulling the damper off the vehicle. In the box for the crank pulley installer tool, it comes with the hub for the crank pulley, the actual puller itself, some adapters for various crank sizes, none of which I can use for B-Series, unfortunately, and a couple bolts and washers to assist with the pulling. Comes with instructions right here, try and get the shadows off of it, but this is how you orient it to install or remove the crank pulley. I'm gonna get the crank pulley set up on the engine and I'll show you how to put it on. So the first part to installing your crank pulley is to take off your old one. If you're in car, this nut might be pretty tight, so I'm using an impact gun. I'm out of the vehicle, so it should be a lot easier for me, especially because this thing's not torqued. Took that out, and I need to go grab my keyway and slide it into the crank before I get any further and forget to install it. So here's the keyway. Uh, make sure you don't forget this stuff. Very important. This guy just drops in right like that and then we're gonna set the crank pulley on next. All right guys, so it's been a couple days. Reason for that is I went to thread the crank pulley adapter into the crank and it ended up not being machined correctly to fit well with the threads and I didn't wanna force it. So I reached out to Charlie and he ended up sending me a new one. So we're all good on that. Now it's time to get this thing back on the car. So the first step is to just thread the crank pulley adapter into the crank. I just did it lightly with a 19 mil open end, just barely turned it in there. Second step is gonna be to set the crank pulley onto the crankshaft. I'm gonna keep my hand on this just because I don't want it to fall off. I'm gonna give it a couple taps with a rubber mallet just to get it all lined up. It has timing marks on it, which are super awesome. And then after I get it tapped on there a little bit, I'm going to install the crank pulley tool and we're gonna press this guy on there. I just got the whole tool set up onto the crank pulley. It's definitely gonna help if you thread the crank adapter into the tool first, if you have this Proform tool, I think it's what it's called. It's not the ATI tool, so the clearances aren't quite as good. Makes it a little bit easier if you thread it on and then thread the whole thing on. Um, I'm gonna try and make sure this thing's evened out, and then I'm going to tighten this big nut to press the pulley on using this giant washer, I guess you could call it here. Um, it's gonna be pretty difficult to do. I need to counter hold this guy as I crank the pulley on there, and I'll let you guys know how it goes once I get it on there. I've heard that these things are pretty hard to get on to the car, so I'll give it a shot. I definitely don't want to break anything, but definitely take some force, I've heard. So I 
got this guy on here. This is way easier than I thought it was going to be, honestly. Just turned it right on there, pulled the crank pulley tool off, and we're all set to go. Um, the next step is to install the extra ring for the power steering belt. All right, we're back with like day four of installing a crank pulley. I got all the stuff I need, I think. I'm gonna take out the six bolts that are on the hub and I'm gonna lock tight them and torque them down. The six bolts are what is known as a Torx Plus, T40 Plus, TP40 says this Matco socket. I didn't have one of these, so I had to borrow one from a coworker, but fits right in there like that. I'm gonna take them out one by one, lock tight them and torque them. I'll let you guys know what the torque spec is once I read through the manual, and then I'm going to torque down these three bolts to hold down the accessory pulley. I left myself a note up here to torque the main bolt once I get a flywheel holder. I don't have one right now, but I'm going to need one to do the flywheel itself, so that'll be coming soon. I have one. I just haven't had the time to install it yet. So here I got some Loctite on the bolt. I'm going to shove this thing in here left-handed. There was already some Loctite on this one, but I'm just going to do them all again just to have some peace of mind that they've all been done correctly. Torque spec on these guys, if they're not quarter 20 thread, is 16 foot-pounds. So I'm going to get all six of these guys torqued down. Next step is to get this accessory pulley on. Same deal, Loctite torque to 18 foot-pounds. Going to get those guys on right now. So here are the three bolts all torqued up. One, two, three. They are 5 16 head, 12 point. Kind of surprised I even had a socket for that. I'll, I have all metric stuff at home basically. So got those guys in. You need to make sure that even if you're not running this extra pulley that you use these bolts, it's a requirement to have nine bolts minimum holding the crank pulley together. Gonna stick this guy back on here so I can remember to torque the main bolt once I get the motor in the car or if I get a flywheel holder. And that's it for installing the ATI pulley. Next up, I gotta fix some damaged threads up in the head, and that's what we're gonna get to next. I'm not sure you can see this or not, but this upper hole for the distributor is pretty messed up. There's not a whole lot of threads left. Actually, there's no threads left. So I'm gonna try and throw a helicoil in this guy. If you've seen me do a helicoil on this channel before, I'm gonna be using an M8125. Need a 2164 drill bit. I'm gonna throw a blanket over the top of this motor so I don't get any shavings inside. And I'm gonna get after it. Probably not gonna film doing the helicoil because it's gonna take quite a bit, but I'll let you guys know if it works out. If not, I'll probably just have to run the two lower bolts, but I'd really like this to work out, so wish me luck. Boom, there it is. This coil has been healed. The bolt goes in pretty damn straight, honestly not bad for using the, all the wrong tools. Threads were pretty dicked on this. I'm surprised I was even able to fix it. That's pretty cool. Able to do it on the engine. Wasn't gonna, didn't have to take the cam caps off or anything like that. I'm gonna go grab the distributor and see if it'll fit. So the distributor thread's on. It has a little bit of trouble adjusting. A little tight. Helicoil's definitely not perfect, but this is the distributor that I'm gonna be using. It's just an OEM OBD2 distributor. I spliced in an OBD1 conversion wiring harness just because it's gonna be easier than having a double plug nonsense going on. But I'm gonna actually pull this distributor back off and take all the guts out of it because I'm gonna be doing coil on plug on this car. Again, I'm already wired for it. I have a video up on how to convert, so. I'm going to go through the process of removing all the components that I don't need out of this distributor. So here's the distributor all gutted out, ready for a nice little billet block off plate. I just need to get some loom for this, kind of ugly, but it'll work, at least I hope so. Um, I need a couple more coolant hoses, I need this guy right here, I think that's it actually. Got these ones on, got some shitty Chinese coil bracket that I'm probably going to have to order another one of because it doesn't look like it fits very well couple sensors this thing's about ready to go in i think that's going to be about it for this video guys thank you guys for watching as always like comment subscribe you know the deal hopefully we'll have this motor in the car here pretty soon we'll get it ripping and i'll see you guys next time